لا تلهكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم عن ذكر الله ومن يفعل ذلك فأولئك هم الخاسرون صدق الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى says oh you who have iman do not be distracted from the remembrance of Allah by your property or by your offspring Whoever allows that to happen, they are the losers. This term, khusran, loss in the Qur'an means those who have been invited to make a small effort for a finite period in the dunya and have lost out on an infinite reward in akhirah. So that's real khusran, real loss. And the verse warns us about this distraction that can take place when we become fixated on the things that we own and on our children, praising them to our friends, taking them to endless treats, dressing them in the best clothes, <coughs> giving them the latest toys, the latest mobile phones, the latest things, games that children demand. All of that is, according to this verse, a potential distraction. And it's a distraction from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A real distraction. And he says elsewhere subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّمَا, أول, إنما أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةً وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ أَجْرًا عَظِيمٌ What you own and your children are only a temptation, fitna. And Allah has the great reward. Human beings are short-termists. We think primarily in terms of the pleasures of the next minute. If not, then perhaps five minutes. Perhaps tomorrow, the smarter we are and the more in control of ourselves that we are, the longer range our planning and our wisdom will be. The believer is called to extend the horizon of his forward planning until the next world and indeed until infinity. The Amwal and the awlad must not get in the way what we own and our offspring. The great zina, the great beauty that is also a distraction in this world. And again and again, Allah's book returns to this subject. al takathur he says. Hatta zulkumul maqabir. You are distracted by competing in worldly increase until you finally end up visiting your graves, and so on, until we get a picture from Allah's book that this dunya is indeed something to be feared, that it is the love of worldly things, the fanatical devotion to them that brings about this khusran. In a famous hadith narrated by Imam Tirmidhi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَا دِئْبَانِ ضَارِيَانِ أُرْسِلَا فِي زَرِيبَةِ غَنَمْ لِأَكْثَرَ إِفْسَادًا فِيهَا 
من حب الشرف والمال والجاه في قلب الرجل المسلم. Even two wolves let loose in a sheepfold do not do more harm within it than do the love of prestige and property and self-regard in the hearts of a Muslim. These are strong words. And he is, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, famed for his own zuhud in the dunya. And an even better known hadith that is in both Bukhari and Muslim collection, he says, يقول ابن آدم مالي مالي وهل لك إلا ما أكلت فأفنيت أو لبست فأبليت أو تصدقت به فأمضيت The child of Adam says My money, my money But do you have anything at all other than that which you eat and cause to pass away or that which you wear and wear out or that which you give away in sadaqah and thereby make eternal <coughs> it's true we consume and the pleasures are gone except the people of the sadduq the people who truly are using their wealth fil halal fi huquq al ibad in what is halal in what is permissible in order to uphold the rights that other people have over one, the rights of the orphan, of the traveller, of the needy, of those who require da'wah to Islam. That is the only wealth we ever have that can be seen as being permanent. Otherwise, it is indeed fitna. It's narrated in an old, old story that when the first ever gold coin and gold, silver, gold and silver coin in the history of the world were minted. The shaitan grabbed them and raised them to his forehead and then kissed them. And he said, Man ahabbakuma fahuwa abdi haqqa. Whoever loves you is certainly my slave. And the Prophet says, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith, Ta'ita abdi dinar. Woe betide the slave of the golden coin, the slave of the silver coin. The Muslim sees things always from the perspective of eternity. Nothing in this dunya is anything other than a means to eternal peace and joy, or a means to eternal uproar and misery. <coughs> Everything that we see, that we touch, that we smell, anything that our senses can perceive, including those most precious things, coins of gold and silver, are only means to an end. If we take them as ends, if we are indeed distracted by the fikertur, the rivalry in worldly <coughs> interest, then what we have is a form of idolatry. Then we have this full hikum, this distraction. The last book always charts for us the middle way. Now, there's not a religion that says we have to be monks, that it is never good to own anything. We have, of course, the example of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, one of whose du'as was, and it's in the sound hadith: "Allahumma aqini miskina, wa amitni miskina, wa qshurni fi zumrati al-masakin." O oh Allah, cause me to live as a poor man and to die as a poor man and raise me up again in the company of the poor, the masakin. But in the Qur'an we find that everything is to be, on that basis, in just balance. Look at the story in Surah Al-Kahf, where the companion of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam surprises the Prophet by knocking down a wall. And then he explains his ta'wil, his interior sight, enables him to explain why he did that. Two orphan boys needed money that was buried beneath it. وَيَسْتَخْرِجَ كَنْزَهُمَا رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكْ So that they might bring out their treasure as a rahmah, as a mercy from your Lord. 
that too, presumably, was gold and silver. But for them, as orphans, as truly needy people, it is the Rachma. And elsewhere he says, And he will strengthen you with money and with offspring. So this too can be a positive thing in the life of the believer. This is part of the greatness of Islam, that we have the one model of perfect sanctity, of perfect balance, that was Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And each of the companions are like stars deriving their light from his light. And we know that some of them were poor, the Ahlul Sufa, the people who lived destitute at his door. But some of them also were wealthy, Atriyat. This is part of the universality of Islam. There is something for everybody, the sabr of the poor and the shukr of the wealthy. However, the Qur'an leaves us in no doubt that those who are genuinely distracted by worldly increase, who make it an end in itself rather than giving away in sadaqah, helping their families, working in every way for the betterment of Allah's creation, are in effect guilty of a form of idolatry, of shirk. And ours is an age which in its cleverness no longer believes in idols of stone and wood, but its idols are the idols of the great banks, the financial houses, of the obsessive competition amongst billionaires who are kept awake at night by the thought that somebody else might make a business deal more quickly than they. Ta'isa abdul dinar, ta'isa abdul dirham. Miserable is the slave of the dinar. Miserable is the slave of the dirham. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us and all of the ummah people of the middle way. To give us what we need for our worldly needs, but never to let us be confused between the means and the end. So that everything that we earn can be with a pure niya, that is, to satisfy the basic need that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives as rights to his ibad, to his servants, and also to help us to reform our families, and to feed the hungry, and to clothe the naked, and to be truly beacons of light and charity and sadaqah in a world where the difference and the gulf between the very rich and absent-minded and the very poor and desperate has never been greater. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين إنه هو الغفور الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله فإنه خير الزاد وإياكم مختتات الأمور فكل مختتة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار واعلموا أن الله قد أمركم بأمر عظيم أمركم بالصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين فقال جل ثناؤه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ووفق الله مولاة أمور المسلمين إلى العمل بكتاب الله وصنة سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة